This video is sponsored by Newspark.io, digital workflow for video production professionals. Iman Gadzi's editing style might be one of the most effective on YouTube, especially when it comes to talking head videos. It's no secret that his animations look so goddamn good, his animator definitely needs a pay rise. And I will be showing you how to emulate those animation styles later on in the video, with all the effects and techniques that he uses. But there are actually four other editing techniques that he uses that are more effective than his animations and might be actually more important as to why his videos get so many views and so many people are absolutely addicted to watching them. The first one is the scripting and the planning. A lot of people think that editing just starts when you get the footage, but you can actually be editing and planning things before you even get footage. And all of this makes the editing so much smoother. But how does Iman Gadzi use it? So often it's actually your words that engage people and not the visuals so much that are on screen. What you're saying has so much weight and is so powerful if you are saying the right things at the right time. So I can genuinely from the ball of my heart tell you what works and what doesn't. He always makes sure to show you and tell you what you're gonna benefit from in this video. And if you watch to the end, what you're going to gain and how your life is going to be better by watching this video, which is so powerful because who doesn't want to improve their life by watching a 10 minute video? And not to mention that as he makes more and more videos, his viewers are almost trained into thinking that. So if he doesn't say it in the start of the video, they are still thinking that this video is gonna change my life because it's made by Iman Gadzi. And he always makes incredible videos that have so much value in. Which is so important when getting viewers to watch multiple different videos on a channel. Almost building a tribe of people. But do you know what's even more important than this? How he knows his viewer and how he knows who is watching his video. This means that he knows who he's talking to, which makes his scripting so much easier and it makes it so much more powerful to the viewer because the viewer then feels like they are having a conversation almost with Iman. You feel much more involved in the video and knowing his viewer has another advantage. He knows what his viewer is interested in and most importantly, what their pain points are. So he knows what they're struggling with, what they can improve on, how they feel about themselves and their life and what they want more. And on Iman, Mangadzi's channel, most of the time it's to be more successful and make more money. So because he knows that these kinds of people are watching his videos, he knows what types of videos to make, he knows how to script them, he knows how to talk to them, everything is just so much more efficient. And this does two things. In the short term, viewers watch for the promise of having their problems solved. But in the long term, it creates an audience that is loyal to Iman Gadzi and will always watch his videos because he has helped them out so much in the past. This is then compounded by the fact he is an expert in his field and someone that the viewers look up to massively because he is making a crazy amount of money and running multiple businesses alongside a whole YouTube channel. And because he is that guy, he can provide you the answers. But a lot of the time, it's actually how this information is presented in the videos that makes them so addictive to watch. But before that, let's talk about Newspark.io. It's a post-production workflow tool which allows you to easily gather, search, store, and publish your video asset. It saved me a lot of time whilst editing so I can either do more projects or have more free time to relax. I've been using it and it's a great asset for video editors and creators to utilize. Upload your files to send to other video editors or creators, get feedback from them on how the video could be improved, and search for files using keywords from the audio of video files and schedule videos to go live on YouTube. It's absolutely free to sign up and try out. So head over to their website and give it a go. The pacing in his videos is amazing for videos with lots of information that needs to be taken in by the viewer. His videos have such a smooth flow to them. It's almost like the rhythm of a beating drum. And something is always changing in rhythm to that beat, whether it's the change of the camera, whether it's something moving in an animation. Everything is just boom, boom. Boom. And it makes it so easy to watch and take things in because your brain gets into this rhythm of watching and knows when to take in information. If the pacing is going up and down like it would for an entertaining video when you want to create emotion and really play on a viewer's senses and make them feel happy and then sad to engage them, that is completely different. We don't need to do that in an informational video because we just need the person to be relaxed and in the best state of mind to take in information. We don't want their 
their emotions to be pinging everywhere because then they won't be able to think about what is actually happening and how they could use the information that you're telling them. So pacing in informational videos and entertainment videos is completely different. Iman Gadzi has absolutely nailed it for his type of videos. It'd be insanely hard to take in information if Iman Gadzi was screaming at the screen like Mr. Beast does at the start of every video. I'm Iman Gadzi and today you're gonna learn how to make 10K a month by opening a crypto account. If the whole video was like that, it'd be so hard to take the information in and it just wouldn't have as much value to people because everyone would just be like, whoa. What am I watching? It just wouldn't have the same effect. It wouldn't be as watchable and wouldn't be as binge worthy where you can just absorb so much information. But now onto the final editing technique before we get on to the After Effects tutorials and how to do the Eman Gadzi animations. We're looking at the visualization, which is honestly nailed and is very important to the whole style of animations. There are three different ways that he visualizes things with his animations. Some are quite basic, like a graph or one, two, three, four. Some some are like quite literal of a person doing something or sat at a desk or working. And then some are quite theoretical where it's uh, like skills being stacked on one another and we're using Lego blocks to show those skills being stacked. That actually, you know, isn't actually gonna happen when you're skill stacking, but it's a great way to show it and a great way to make viewers think about how it would be stacked in their brain or them learning like so much more information. These animations make the viewer think so much more about what is being said said and really process it. And if we know anything from my past editing breakdowns, making a viewer think makes them so much more engaged. People are much less likely to click on the video if they're thinking, oh, how is that? Or how does that apply to me? Or how has he done that? Or their brain is engaged. It's when people are bored and not really into the video that they click on. So now that we know how the animations affect a viewer and why they're so important, let's see how technically we can produce them and what different effects and techniques are used in Eman Gadzi's videos. But just before that, quickly back to newspark.io. It replaces multiple services video editors use every single day. Saving you time and money with online footage storage, video feedback, video scheduling, all in one subscription. And if you want to sign up for a paid version with extra features, use the code JOEEDITS to get your first paid month for free. Thank you to newspark.io for making this video possible and supporting the channel. Start with the cartoon man and a prop. I've gone for a board. You can find this on Envato Elements or any of the websites and a grid in behind. Scale up the grid so there is room for it to cover two screens and can slide across. Then we are going to puppet pin our man's arm to wiggle a little bit. Add in pin points to all the pieces you want to stay still and move. I've gone for his legs, his elbow and his arm and his neck and his head because we want his arm to move and his head to move. Then come down to the timeline, click into mesh one, go to deform, and then we just want to turn off all of these keyframes. Then hold control and wiggle the hand slowly as you see the timeline will play. And then this creates keyframes and will move at the same speed that you moved it. We are then going to do the same thing for the head, but move it a little bit more slowly because your head doesn't move as much as your hand. Then we are going to concentrate on making this slide over. So I'm adding in a null object and attaching all of these layers to the null object. Now I'm just keyframing the position and scale so that we slide over to another part of the grid that is blank. And then we're going to create our second animation in this area right here. I'm just creating a very quick loading bar. I'll leave a link in the description to how to do it. It doesn't really matter what animation you have here. I just want to have something to slide over to and make it look Eman Gadzi style. Then we link all the layers from this animation to the null object in the right hand side of the grid and it should slide over like this. Slide over was originally a bit quick so I slowed it down. I would also play around with the easings of the keyframes but just for time's sake I'm just going to go with easy ease on these. So we have our basic animation, now we're going to give it that proper Eman Gadzi style. I'm going to add an adjustment layer on top of all the layers, add in some turbulent displace. I'm changing the amount to 8 and the size to 18 and then we keyframe the evolution you can play about with this and see how much displacement you want but I've put at the start of the clip 0 and at the end of the clip 360 and then I'm going to add on an old film overlay with a bit of grain I just found this on YouTube set the mode to screen and then lower the opacity to 50% then we're going to add some roughened edges on to give it that paper texture that all the animations have in Eman Gadzi's videos these are the settings I used I changed edge type to spiky and then just played around with the other settings so it looked 
good once you like the look of it keyframe the evolution in the same way we did for the turbulent displays and then i did the same thing for the loading bar and finally highlight all of your layers go to pre-compose and then on top of that pre-comp add in a slow scale from the first frame to the last frame of 100 to 115 and this will give you a slow zoom over the whole animation and with a bit more tweaking and playing around with certain settings this is what it should look like the main thing to get the eman gadsy style is the turbulent displays the roughened edges and the sliding over with the null object